This lesson deals with supplemental problem 4.4. You can find this problem in the ECE 201 ebook in the chapter 4 supplemental problems on page 4. Given the circuit with one independent current source, three resistances, and one dependent voltage control current source, can you solve for the note voltage V1? Now in chapter 3 we had an inspection algorithm that had independent current sources and resistances, and we could form our equations by inspection. In chapter 4 we looked at modifying that algorithm to include dependent sources. But this is still a current source. We'll treat it the same way we did in chapter three. So with two nodes, I've got a two by two matrix. Column one associated with V1, column two with V2. Left-hand side of the equation, I've got two rows, one column. It'll be a two by one vector. I'll be putting my current sources in this left-hand side of the equation. Now what goes in row one, column one is the sum of the conductances at node one. That'll be a quarter plus a half. A common mistake students make is to add up these two resistors first and then take the reciprocal, in other words, one-sixth. That's not the same as a quarter plus a half. So be careful with that. What goes in row one, column two, is the sum of the conductances between nodes one and two negated. So that'd be one-half in this case with a minus sign in front. What goes on the left-hand side of the equation are the currents entering node one, so that's going to be four amps, and then the current in this direction is a minus V1 over four. That's my first equation. Second equation, then, is at node two, Sum the conductances at node two, that'll be a half plus a sixteenth. That's gonna go in row two, column two. It goes in row two, column one, is the sum of the conductances between nodes two and one, negated. In this case, it'll just be a minus one half. And lastly, what goes in the left-hand side of the equation are the current sources that are entering node two, and that's just gonna be V1 over four. All right, so we've got two equations and two unknowns, but our controlled source gave us term on the left-hand side of the equation, but V1 is on the right-hand side of the equation. So we could bring that over to this side of the equation because this column is associated with V1. So bring this on the other side of the equation, you're just left with a four, and then when you bring it over here, it becomes a plus one quarter times V1. Likewise here, bring it over here, we'd have a minus one quarter times V1, plus what we had before, which was the minus one half times V1. We're left with just zero here. Okay, now we can simplify this by combining those fractions. So a quarter plus a half plus a quarter is one, minus 0.5, a quarter and a half is three quarters, so minus 0.75, and then a half plus sixteenth, I can't do it in my head, but on my calculator I got a positive 0.5625. All right, let's solve for V1 in our problem, and we could use Kramer's rule to do that. So we'll take the left-hand side of the equation and put it into column one, and then we'll find that determinant and divide it by the determinant of the conductance matrix. So four times 0.5625, minus zero times minus 0.5. So just product of these two, which turns out to be 2.25. For the denominator, one times 0.5625, and then a minus the product of these two. And the minus signs cancel, I have one extra minus sign, that's 0.375. And that ratio turns out to be 12 volts. And this is supplemental problem 4.4.